dude. <laughs> ah, yes. Okay, so, so I'm always talking about wanting to have a machine that we can plug onto a musician and see music through their eyes, right? How do they see music? And it, it's obvious to see, and now that we, we've heard it from the man himself, that his main focus is the vocals and maybe sometimes the guitars um he's not trying to add anything special to it he's just really centered and completely aware of what the sound around him is and he's just responding to his surrounding which is such a beautiful thing to do dude like the kids do this when we're children we're we're used to playing outside we're used to playing on the on the playground we're just using the environment around us to express ourselves in some way right uh, like a skater might use a curb to grind you know or, or like when i was a rollerblader so a curb to me was an opportunity to do an 180 or a 360 he, he's using his environment and his environment are the other musicians Ugh. okay let's continue so around the kit you can see you're using lots of different linear stickings and sticking patterns uh what are some of the ones that you would say define your drumming i've always been a big Eric Moore fan. Eric Moore. And, and, and gospel drummers in general. But I've taken a lot of influence from a couple of called Eric's licks. Um, find their way into my playing. Um, as an example, I use an eight note linear phrase, which, which is played as right, left, right, left, kick, right, left, kick. That, along with a phrase called the 3132, which is a triplet phrasing of nine notes, played as right, left, right, kick, right, left, right again on the hands, and then finished with two notes on the kick. What I particularly like about this phrasing is that it's three notes short of resolving itself. So, as a drummer, you're forced to be creative with those last three notes <laughs> and finish the sticking, the phrasing, in any way you see fit. Wow, dude. Wow, that was something. Say that again. That's what it does with it. Right hand, right there. What the? That was he fit a lot in that little time. Additionally, I'm a big fan of the standard paradiddle. I use this as a chop starter, often as I feel it's an organic way to prepare the listener oh. for a slightly busier section within the drums themselves. Oh, okay. Ooh, let's 
Wait, 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 wait. Let's talk about what he just said, actually, before we get to that. He goes back to the basics, right? I'm not a drummer, but I know paradiddles are like the very basics. You have to practice that over and over and over and over and over and over again, right? He's saying he likes to start a phrase with a basic paradiddle to kind of warm you up and prepare you for something that's going to get a lot busier. So rather than just hitting you with a right, he starts off with a little bit of a paradiddle and then eventually works his way to a whatever it is that he does. That's brilliant, dude. I would recommend anyone to always go back to the basics. Always go back to the fundamentals of your instrument whatever that instrument may be because there is i think that's home base for creativity if you remember the, those very basic exercises it prepares you for the much more expressive exercises the more expressive uh fills or solos or decorations as like i like to call them brilliant brilliant stuff all right too let's let's see what else you got the drums themselves gonna drag it at some point huh me of another band oh muse muse that's muse yeah muse Weapon. 
Welling up here. Something creeping up on you and and <laughs> genius. Ooh. Sounds like another band. Soundgarden? Ah, <laughs> dude. Incubus? Incubus. When you're performing live with Sleep Token, do you try to stay true to the record, or are you actually taking quite a few creative liberties Great question. Uh, in the live set? I would say that most of the parts that I, I tend to play in a live setting vary drastically to what was tracked on the record itself. This happens for a number of reasons. Sometimes, when I have more time to sit with a finished track while rehearsing for a tour, I can look at it through a different lens and subsequently come up with a more interesting variation live. Um, on the other hand, these, these things can happen more naturally and take on a different feel or sticking due to you simply playing a certain song for long periods of time across touring. The, are, of course, certain parts in each song that must remain true to the original. This could be a syncopated guitar part or even an electronic part on the pads that serves more of a so yes, what did I say? What did I say? Storytelling, bro. Digital base burrito. Oh, my God. 
Is it okay if I hear that attack one more time? I love attacks. I love attacks. Yes. Ooh, that's there. Dragon. See him accenting with the guitar? Pack a vocal. some of your favorite drummers who have influenced your playing over the years? When I first 